Greetings, everyone. I want to talk about the new moon on January 11th as we move into this first lunar cycle of 2024. I think it is very powerful that Pluto is very prominent both at the time of the new moon on the 11th and then at the time of the full moon on January 25th. In a way, this initial lunar cycle is encapsulating, I think, the themes of 2024. As we experience this new moon in Capricorn with the sun and moon conjunct Pluto, it's about profound transformation and deconstruction of the forms of the past to prepare us for the full moon on January 25th with the sun in the sign of Aquarius conjunct Pluto now in Aquarius opposite the moon in Leo. How are we moving into the Aquarian paradigms and living from the heart? So I have recently put out a video to help support us as a community in how we can be moving into manifesting these Aquarian paradigms. But let me show you in more specific ways how this lunar cycle and this new moon is supporting us in that process. And let me show you the chart. So here is the chart with the new moon at 20 degrees of Capricorn with both the sun and moon conjunct Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And remember, that final degree of the, uh, the sign is really showing us how in an intensified way, Pluto is calling us to release the systems and structures Capricorn from the past that we need to let die in order to move into the Aquarian age. And by January 20th, Pluto will be back in Aquarius and stay in that sign until September 1st. So we're in this accelerated time of transformation and change as we move into 2024. And it's particularly powerful that this new moon is not only conjunct Pluto, the planet of transformation, but is also in a trine with Uranus. So these two planets that speak to how powerful it is that we're in this time to release what we need to release from the past, to gain clarity Uranus about where we're out of balance to be in this profound process of transmutation. And all three outermost planets, all three of the transpersonal planets are actually in aspect to this new moon. The, the sun and moon are conjunct Pluto, trining Uranus, sextiling Neptune. So remember, these three planets are the planets that are most powerful in guiding us through times of change. And with Neptune in the mix, we're being supported to hold ourselves with compassion, to expand into that higher consciousness and spiritual understanding of Pisces, to remember we're a part of the oneness of all that is, and to not only be in this process of transformation and increasing clarity, calling us to set ourselves free from what would hold us back from the past, but Neptune is supporting us in trusting and surrendering to the currents of change of this time that we're in. I find it also incredibly powerful that this new moon is exactly squaring the lunar nodes. So it highlights this theme of the lunar node, south node in Libra, north node in Aries, that will continue throughout all of 2024. And I've, as I've said in earlier videos, I see this dynamic with the nodes in Libra and Aries as a powerful message to us that we're in this time karmically and spiritually where we're called to come back into balance, Libra, in order to move into new forms and new ways of being, North Node and Aries. The fact that this new moon is exactly squaring 
those lunar nodes means this is a karmic moment. This is accelerating this choice point that we're in about what is the path that we're going to take. Is it the path of higher consciousness or is it to cling to the paradigms and structures from the past? But Pluto is guiding us to remember that those forms and structures are being deconstructed. We can resist the change that we're in in this time. We can try to cling to the past as some in positions of power in the world are trying to do, but it will not succeed. These transpersonal energies that are supporting us and guiding us through this time of transformation are so clearly drawing us through this time of death, rebirth, this time of transmutation and transformation. And with the new moon squaring the nodes, and remember that they're applying to the south node in order to move into the energies of the north node. So the powerful message of this new moon is how are you in balance in your life? How are you out of balance? What do you need to release from the past in order to come back into harmony with yourself, with all that is, in order to move into these new forms and ways of being and a new sense of self? It's also very significant that now Chiron is within a five degree orb with the North Node. So it's moved into conjunction with the North Node and will be within that five degree orb conjunct the North Node through until May. And also Arizona is continuing to be conjunct the North Node until later in the month. So this is such a powerful message to us that the energies of this new moon can guide us in our healing process healing and moving into a new sense of self, new ways of being. And Arizona is saying, dare to step out of the conventional forms and paradigms of the past. Dare to follow your own intuition, your own creativity, your own spiritual guidance to be on your own path of truth and of expression of these new ways of being. That theme of healing is also highlighted in the trine between Chiron and Venus. Venus also at 15 degrees now in the sign of Sagittarius. And Venus is conjunct Ceres. So I see this aspect as supporting us not only in healing our sense of self, but healing in our relationships and healing in our relationship with the earth series. So this is a very intense new moon calling us into healing, calling us into transformation, supporting us in releasing what we need to release in order to be moving more fully into the Aquarian age. And I think we're also supported by Mercury being at 27 degrees of Sagittarius meaning it is conjunct the galactic center at the time of this new moon. And Mercury is squaring Neptune. So we're supported in attuning to our connection to the galactic center, to source. Mercury in Sagittarius squaring Neptune to allow ourselves to open to our own intuitive ways of knowing to listen to the guidance within ourselves, listen to the guidance from spirit, to know how to be in this process of healing, coming back into balance, to move in new directions, into new ways of being and new forms. So we're in this accelerated time in 2024 and in such a, a significant way this new moon is giving us clarity about what this year will be about and how we can begin to tune into that and be in alignment with these energies to be in our own transformational process. 
I also think it's significant that the Sabian symbol for this new moon at 20 degrees of Capricorn is that much can be achieved with group cooperation. The image for this Sabian symbol is a relay race. And I think in such a profound way, it's reminding us that as we move into the energies of the Aquarian age, it is about our coming into a deeper understanding of community and our capacity to collaborate with each other and co-create this new world together. So as we're in this process of deconstructing the paradigms of the past, being in our own individual transformation process, we're being supported to remember our interconnectedness with each other, to be in community with each other, to support each other in this time of transmutation. So let me now show you where these energies are in the sky at the time of this new moon. So here you have the sun and moon conjunct. Here's Pluto. Here's Mars. Mercury, Venus, you can see that they're all clustered here in the sky in the stars of Sagittarius. Here's Mercury conjunct the galactic center and Venus beneath the stars of Ophiuchus and close to Antares in Scorpius. With the sun and moon and Pluto in the stars of Sagittarius, remember that is the archer who keeps his gaze on the galactic center, on source. So as we're in this time of transformation, it's important for us to keep our alignment with our soul selves and with that focus on source, the source of all that is, that is guiding us through this time of transmutation. And again, Mercury in conjunction with our view of the galactic center is supporting us in that. And Venus being under the stars of Ophiuchus, the great healer, close to the star, royal star Antares in the scorpion, is again emphasizing how we're meant to heal in our relationship with ourselves, in our relationships with others, in our relationship with the earth. I do believe as we're in this accelerated time of change in 2024, we're being carried through this time of the ending of the age of Pisces, the movement into the age of Aquarius, which I believe we'll be more fully entering into at the end of 2024, when Pluto moves fully into Aquarius. And remember, remember, I also see that as the end of the Kali Yuga, the end of the time of ignorance, to be supporting us in moving into these higher states of consciousness of the fourth and fifth dimension that we're being called into. As I've said in earlier videos, we're becoming homo luminous ones. We're remembering our true spiritual nature the way in which we are energy beings, beings of light, we're being transformed into a radically new way of being human, of being on this planet. So it's a very intense and accelerated, accelerated time of change that we're in. And I think we can be supported in being in that transformational process by remembering the power of ceremony. Ceremony supports us in being in this rite of passage where we are dying to an old sense of identity. We are allowing the old forms and paradigms of the past to deconstruct. In order to be in this liminal time, and remember, it's in the time in between, in a rite of passage, where you truly are in that process of healing and transfer transformation, in order then to be 
empowered in stepping into the new birth, the new forms, the new ways of being. Again, it's like the caterpillar going into the chrysalis to become the butterfly. The way of being the caterpillar is dying. We are in this chrysalis of transmutation and transformation to emerge into being homo luminous ones, to emerge and move into fifth dimensional ways of being beyond our wildest imagination. But as we're in this chrysalis time, We are needing to honor being in this liminal space, being in the not knowing, being in the time of deconstruction and in this process of healing and transmutation. So I do believe doing ceremony is powerfully supportive of us in trusting in this process and allowing ourselves to be supported by the energies of the earth and sky as we're moving into these radically new ways of being. So at the time of the new moon, I encourage you to do a fire ceremony. It can even be sitting with a candle to allow yourself to focus as you sit with the fire or sit with the candle on what is it that you're allowing to die to be released from your identity in the past, from the patterns of the past? What is it you're needing to let go of that has kept you out of harmony, out of balance, out of true alignment with your authentic self, with your soul self? Allow yourself to set that intention to release those patterns of the past, those ways in which you've felt out of balance, those ways in which you've been in relationship with yourself or with others that haven't felt in alignment with right relationship, true mutuality, and honoring of your true self and that uniqueness of the other person. Allow yourself to put that into the fire, to be released to die in order to allow you to be in this spaciousness of this time of transmutation. To know that as you move towards the full moon, we'll be guided in how to begin to dream these new forms, these new paradigms into being. But as you sit with the flame, sit with the fire, at the time of this new moon. Allow it to be both a time to release what you need to release and to begin to dream, begin to envision your own sense of who you can be as you remember your true nature, as you remember that you're a being of the stars, of the galaxy. You are a light being a homo luminous one. What can you allow yourself to energize, to support you in beginning to morph and move into that new birth and new way of being? Allow yourself to set that intention, to begin to dream into being those new forms. And hold that time as a sacred time And know that as we're in this time of transformation, we are being held and guided by the energies of the earth and sky and are profoundly being connected by the intensification of the energies coming from the sun and coming from the galactic center. So hold this powerful new moon as a sacred time to allow yourself to be in this time of death, rebirth, releasing the past, staying open to what needs to emerge in the future. And know that we together as a community are supporting each other in this process. And that together we can be 
co-creating these new paradigms. We are meant to remember our interconnectedness with each other, our interconnectedness with all of life, our capacity to be co-creators with the cosmos. As we begin to take that in and align with our true nature and stay centered in our soul selves, this can be an exhilarating time, a time of heightened creativity. And we can be in the turbulence that's continuing to unfold in the world and hold that with compassion, but not get mired in those third dimensional forms and structures from the past. We are letting go of the out of balance paradigms of the age of Aries. We are energizing our new way of being to say no to war, no to violence, to destruction, to trauma and abuse of each other, of the earth, of our true natures. We are being supported to hold that deeper knowing that we are in a profound time at this shift into the age of Aquarius. We're letting go also of those patterns from the age of Pisces, the out-of-balanced ways in which instead of stepping more fully into our spiritual selves, we've gotten caught in some of the shadow side of the age of Pisces, addictions, escapism, illusions, the sub-age of Pisces, Virgo, an over-idealization of material reality, a fantasy that we can be in control of our lives and our external environment rather than being co-creators with the cosmos, realizing that we are a part of the sea of oneness of all that is. We are a fractal, a unique expression of cosmic consciousness. So as we're in this very powerful cauldron of transformation with this lunar cycle, we are being supported not only to release those individual patterns that we need to release that are out of balance from the past, but collectively we're being supported to let go of the out of balance paradigms of the age of Aries and the age of Pisces to be open to move into these new energies of the age of Aquarius. As we hold that consciousness together, we can support each other in our individual change and be emanating that energy of healing and higher consciousness into that morphogenic field that supports the shifts in the collective consciousness. As we see the turbulence in the world and the ways in which there are energies that are trying to derail this transformation, there are energies that are trying to control the outcome, know that they will fail. But as we're in that turbulence, in this final phase of this transmutation process, we need to be there for each other hold with compassion those who are in trauma and emanate that healing in ways that we can through our actions, through our own energetic way of sending compassion and healing to those in need. So we can be a healing presence through our energy, through our consciousness, through the healing that we emanate into the collective consciousness as well as in our direct actions. But as we hold to this deeper awareness of this time of change that we're in, as we allow ourselves to come back into our hearts and expand into that higher consciousness, then we are actually being powerful agents of change and healing on the planet. And remember that the earth herself 
is in her own ascension process. So as we connect with her, as we connect and support each other, we are supporting the healing of the world. Thank you for your part in that process. Thank you for the way in which we are actively engaging as a community in being agents of healing and of change and of higher consciousness to support this movement into the Aquarian age. Blessed be.